I don't know. I've never held a whip before. I'd probably be scared of it. Hey, Hodies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom. And thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, we're going to talk about luxury makeup and we're going to have a conversation about how to define it. I'm not going to be the be all end all. That's not what this video is about. I'm not here trying to define what luxury makeup is, but I just want to have a conversation about it because one of my subscribers had asked a very interesting question sometime last year. And if I can find the comment, I'll put it on the screen now. And we're going to like unpack that and talk about it. And I just thought that'd be an interesting concept. So this is a minimal sass. But if you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. On my channel, I really like to unpack makeup marketing. I like to be critical of makeup because we, we have to remember that these brands are not our friends. But I also do love shopping and I do love trying new makeup and new formulas. And so I try to navigate that in such a way where it doesn't feel like we should have to spend our money all the time, know when to be critical and know when to be discerning and allow something to come into our makeup collection. So if that kind of content sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe make sure you like this video because that really helps me I'm looking a little bit like a dominatrix which is like kind of funny for the conversation that I think we're about to have however I got this from a brand called parade and they like they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to be like a brand ambassador and I, I now am I'm not I'm gonna be very passive about that but if you're interested in parade there's like a link down below I have a discount code it's not affiliated but it, it does save you money and oftentimes it goes up to 30% so if you're interested in that go check it out but I, I really didn't mean to plug that here I just had a feeling that people we're going to ask about this. And so there, there's your answer. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. It's patreon.com slash hope mess Tom. There's absolutely no pressure to it's just there if you would like to support me that way. But watching the video and liking it and participating in the conversation in the comment section is plenty. Let's talk about it. So the original commenter, again, whose name I can't remember, and I don't remember verbatim the comment, but if I was able to post it before that comment, they had mentioned that Natasha Denona is a luxury brand. And I had responded, I don't actually think of Natasha Denona as a luxury brand. So what we're going to do is we're first going to talk about Natasha Denona and why I don't think it's a luxury brand, but then I'm going to talk about qualities of what I think a luxury brand is. And then I'm going to talk about brands that are often considered luxury that I may or may not agree with. But I would love to hear you sound off in the comments down below. What's your perception of what a luxury item should be? What would maybe make you pay that price point? I know that's not the price point for everybody that watches my videos and I'm not trying to, you know, that's like not really the conversation I'm trying to have. It's just like, what would deem it worth it? Because for me, what luxury makeup should be is an experience from start to finish. From if I'm ordering from the brand's website, I it should feel like luxury in that first email. I expect my shipping to be free from a luxury brand, whether or not I've hit some shipping minimum. I mean, often with luxury makeup, you're probably spending a good amount of money and you probably are hitting some minimum, but I expect them to take care of shipping. I expect them to also upgrade me to expedited shipping if I spend a certain amount. That's a luxury experience. So those are two things. Those are like the things like baseline when I'm shopping on your website, it should feel like your website's up to date and luxurious and well thought out. And whether I'm shopping on a desktop or not, because a lot of brands only make their websites really good on mobile, which I understand why we are in a more mobile world, but I like to do all my shopping on a desktop. So I take that into consideration. So luxury from me typing in www.whateverthelugurybrandis.com to when it arrives to me from when I open the package and when I hold the item in my hand, what does it feel like? Does it have some weight to it? Does it feel chintzy? What, what are the materials that were used to make the product? I like a heavier material. I prefer, I, cause like luxury for me is like something that's heavy, something that's made of something that is already heavy, not really something that is weighted, which a lot of products are. Like specifically a weight was put in the product to make it heavier. Not that, I'm talking about like it just is that heavy like that is the weight of the compact and I also think it should be something that looks really nice something that I would love to show off on my vanity something that's really beautiful I know a lot of it is about the name but it doesn't really matter what the name is that's on the luxury makeup for me matter of like the whole experience like does the packaging look beautiful what I want to show it off on the vanity does it give the perception that like this was an item that was expensive and then furthermore the Product quality has to be superior. If I am getting just okay at a luxury price point, or if I'm just getting fine at a luxury price point, it has failed me. It is not good enough. It has to be an elevated experience all around, also in the performance of a product. Let's talk about Natasha Denona. I don't actually consider Natasha Denona a luxury brand. I know that their price point is pretty high, but I think there's a number of things to like consider. I'm fairly certain that Natasha Denona's brand 
was at first being like created with makeup artists in mind. Those bigger palettes had a lot of product in them. I might be wrong, but I believe they had at least two grams of product per shadow in there. And that's a lot of eyeshadow. Two grams of eyeshadow is a lot of eyeshadow for you and me to be using on a personal basis. But if we are working makeup artists and have many clients every day, two grams of product, especially if we're dipping into like similar shades all the time on a lot of the clients that we see, we could run through them pretty quickly. And so I think that's what that was designed to be. And also Natasha Denona's packaging has always allowed you to take out the magnetic pan. Therefore, if you are a working makeup artist, you can take the color story out and organize it however you want and put it in a magnetic palette and do whatever you want with the eyeshadows, which up until recently, I feel like was not a concern of the consumer, especially because I, I think the way the makeup industry like kind of worked in the last 10 years is like early 2010s, people were very into singles, making their own color stories. And then as eyeshadow palettes got more popular with the naked De Urban Decay naked palettes with modern renaissance in 2016, the consumer kind of became more obsessed with the pre-made palette with the pre-made color story because it kind of removes some of the work off the consumer. Making your own color story is like not an easy task. I think people were preferring at the time that Natasha Dona really got popular, which I believe the Sunset palette was really what like really put Natasha on the map, got that brand in our eyes because influencers were using the, the Sunset palette and they were really promoting it. Even then, that was when modern renaissance was really big that was like around that time you could remove the pans and that was like not something that a lot of brands do now a lot of brands i think are getting back into that i think makeup lovers and at least the ones that I see, like, you know, the people that I follow on Instagram, we kind of live in this in-between where we like want a pre-made color story, but we also want the option to remove it and like move things around, play with other eyeshadows, like make our own color stories. But like we still want like the base, you know, so we're just like kind of doing some kind of hybrid situation now. And Natasha Denona has like always had that. But like now you can find removable pans in like lethal palettes in melt palettes. Those are those are removable pans. And ColourPop, I think, even does removable pans. So that's like a, a more modern thing that like the, the pans are removable, magnetic, you can move them around. But Natasha Denona has always done that because I think that Natasha Denona was always creating product with the makeup artist in mind. But if a consumer happened to pick it up, then there's that. There's also something to be said. I, I mean, not everyone agrees with me, but I think Natasha Denona's formula is like my favorite formula of eyeshadow. She does a lot of interesting textures. I mean, she's kind of been drifting away from that, but her formulas are really high quality. So I think that's also what you're paying for. High quality formulas, they're going to work the way you want them to work. I have never really had problems working with Natasha Denona eyeshadows. I think they're some of the easiest eyeshadows to work with. And I just really appreciate that. And I, so I think whenever you think of those I don't even know what they cost anymore, but they used to be $129 palettes. Though those palettes, they cost that much because of the amount of product and the quality of the product is my guess. That's what I would that's what I would say you're paying for. Not everyone agrees with me on the quality of product, but I do like Natasha Denona eyeshadows. So I'm saying that like personally. That's what I that's why I think you are paying for. Then Natasha Denona started getting into the 65, which I believe is now $69 formatting, where the pans are smaller, you get significantly less. I I will pop up here how much product you actually get in those pans because I don't know off the top of my head. So you're getting less product per pan, the same amount of eyeshadows, but not the same amount of product in those pans. And the packaging was thought of a little more sleekly. It's like the the bigger palettes, the packaging of that is like not ideal. And then they, I think they are moving towards a more ideal packaging because I think those are becoming plastic. I'm not saying in a sustainability standpoint, but I do think they are more aesthetically pleasing in the plastic packaging. The foam thing that go was going on before, I think a lot of people were turned off by that because it didn't feel luxury. But again, I don't think Natasha was going for luxury. Natasha starts making palettes that are more affordable. You still have the removable pans, but I do believe that those $69 palettes were made because of people talking about Natasha Denona eyeshadows being unapproachable and too expensive. But what she did was smartly, if a consumer is buying it for their own personal collection, make the pan smaller, make it more affordable. And also Natasha Denona has the mini palettes, which are not really aesthetically pleasing, but you're getting the 
quality of Natasha Denona eyeshadows. And I do believe that the mini palettes and the larger palette have like the same quality. I just don't like a lot of the color stories of the mini palettes. So those are like a little bit of a turn off to me. I understand whenever you're talking about the $130 price point for the larger palettes, for the big palettes, like the $129 ones. I can understand why you're, you're saying that we're getting into a luxury price point. But when we talk about the midi palettes, which I think are the ones that most people are interested in, I think a lot of people get disappointed when Natasha Denona goes back to the bigger size palettes because people don't want to spend $130 on a palette. I understand that, especially in today's economy. I can understand and appreciate not wanting to spend $130 on an eyeshadow palette. So I understand why the midi one's more popular, but let's think of some other brands that are in this 50 this $60 to $70 price point. We have Huda Beauty, like their bigger palettes are in that range. I believe they're $65 or $69. And Makeup by Mario just released an eyeshadow palette limited edition over the holiday season for $68. And I believe that the Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes keep creeping up in price. I believe they're in the $50 range now. And I remember when I started makeup, those were like $42 palettes, those original like modern renaissance, like that was the price range at which they are. And those keep creeping up. I do think that the pans are getting bigger in the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes in the last two releases. But so to me, Natasha Denona isn't much off the price point of Anastasia Beverly Hills makeup by Mario in Huda. Natasha Denona just also has palettes with larger pans with large more product in them and I think that's why we're seeing that like like that vast price difference that's what I think is really happening and that's why I don't really actually view Natasha Denona as luxury there's nothing really about anything else that Natasha Denona makes that feels luxury like the face palette quads those don't feel luxury like the packaging is like nicer than some other packaging but it's not like made of some kind of aluminum or tin or it's not made of like a it is lacquered packaging but it's 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 not aesthetically pleasing. It has like a big ND on it and it's like always some god awful atrocious color. Not something that you really want on your vanity. But if you're a working makeup artist or if you're someone who travels a lot, knowing that the, the, the brown thing that's in your bag or the hot pink thing is like, that's my cheek palette. That's my contour palette. Like I think there's a purpose to all of that. And so I think Natasha Denona, while expensive and definitely one of the higher end brands, I don't consider it luxury because the, none of the experience is luxury from the packaging, but it does have the high performance in my opinion and I think that is actually what you're paying for when it comes to Natasha Denona again you may disagree with me but that is why I don't think it's a luxury brand it's not even I don't even think that the brand even touts itself as a luxury brand you don't really see them using that verbiage but brands that want to be luxury they're going to talk about themselves that like they're going to be like the most luxurious divine all of those words they're going to start using them to describe themselves and i don't really feel like natasha denona really does that the the marketing of it is not really luxury it's it's not giving like the same energy that i think other luxury brands do so that's ultimately why i don't think natasha denona is a luxury brand. Let's move on to some brands that call themselves luxury. And I think the greater population thinks that they are luxury, but I'm not 100% sure on. And the first brand I would like to bring up is the brand Chantikai. You're going to be like, Tom, you have some Chantikai product. And I do. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with the system. Something wrong with the system, in my opinion. Chantikai charges exorbitant prices for their products. Ex exorbitant prices for their products. If you've never touched a Chantecaille product before, you wouldn't know this, but every Chantecaille product that I have held in my hand has been something that I would not consider a luxury experience to hold. I had the Future Skin Gel Foundation. It came in a plastic tub and like a plastic lid we couldn't even get a glass jar. It's really strange because you think like you spend all this money. I bought the first interaction I ever had with a Chantecaille product was the blush. I think it was the sea turtle. It might have been the butterfly. I don't remember which one I got, but I got it on guilt. I think I only played, I only, I say I only paid $40 for it, but I think that is cheaper than the regular price. And I also got one of their lip cheeks, which that is the most luxurious product that they sell, holding it. It's weighted. It has a magnetic cap. That feels like a luxury product. I think they're crap. I don't think they're that good. I know a lot of people really like them, but I don't think the lip chics are worth it. So that's my opinion. I'm saying that right here and now. Whenever I picked up that blush, first of all, they never do anything to scale on Chantecaille. They never really show you how big the product is. I got that blush in my hands and the size of that pan was so incredibly disappointing to me. And that little pebble packaging, which is like that thing that they're known for, that their pebble packaging, it's so 
chintzy. I do believe it was like metal, but it was like the lightest and it got dinged up and scratched so fast in my makeup drawer. And the other thing was, I didn't really like the blush was fine, but then they failed me because as I said earlier, luxury brands from start to finish need to be all one thing. But for in in favor of Shantikai, there are some things that they make that are really high performing, but I don't think that they should cost that much. The Future Skin Gel Foundation is a lovely foundation, but until your packaging meets the expectation, I don't think it should cost that much. I don't think it should. It's $82. It's like 80 sub odd dollars for a plastic tub of goop. And it's not like you get an excess amount of product either. It's still one fluid ounce. So it's not like you're even getting like the benefit of like an experience with it. It's just like, what are you doing? So the blurring powder, it's one of my favorite powders. I use it all the time. I just hit pan on mine. So like it's a product that I use a lot. And I think it's a lovely product. But the packaging that I got mine in is limited edition packaging. It's this chintzy plastic. It has like 3D flowers on it. And I actually think it's better than Shantikai's regular packaging, but it's not weighted. And the hinge on it has like given away. It's so like it just flippity flops like it still clasps which is good but once it's open it's like the the, the the cap like flips back and forth and I also have the sunbeam cheek and eye which comes in a plastic compact and I'm saying this honestly it is it is more luxurious than the regular packaging that they have because the regular packaging is so light and chintzy I've had one of the quads incredibly disappointing incredibly disappointing you see that and the pans are so tiny you get like no product in them the eyeshadow quality fine you failed me this should be better than fine should be one of the most magnificent eyeshadow formulas i ever put you don't get a lot of product either so shantikai is upping their prices because they can simply honestly and like again while some things i would buy from shantikai again overall i don't find it to be a luxury brand i don't find it to be a luxury experience even though they tout themselves as such i would like to also discuss pat mcgrath hit or miss on the luxury experience. I actually have never had any shipping issues from the Pat McGrath website, but from my peers and colleagues and people I follow on Instagram, that seems to be a hellscape for most people. And I don't know what it is. I, I'm like, knock on wood, I got lucky. I, ordering from Pat McGrath never has given me any issues, but I just want to make it noted that it's a lot of people don't. And I think a lot of people have had issues with their customer service. So we're you're messing up. Also, I find Pat McGrath's website infuriating to navigate through. Also, Shades are often sold out. I think that a luxury brand should have most of their product in stock. I understand that there are supply chain issues. Like going through her selection of like lipsticks, it's like so many of them have X's on them. There's just like some of them left. And you never know what's going to come back or not from Pat McGrath's website. So that's one thing. However, Pat McGrath sometimes hits the nail on the head. The Mothership palettes from start to finish, very luxurious from the cardboard packaging on the outside to the lacquered beautiful packaging on the inside to the products inside that packaging perform very well. And there's very unique formulas in there. Now, I don't think you need Pat McGrath, right? That's not what I'm trying to say. But like Pat McGrath does a really good job meeting all of the expectations some times. And then other times, they really cheap out on the packaging. Whenever I think of the first Pat McGrath releases, the ones that were in like always limited edition before the brand like had like a steady line and like a core line of product when it was all limited edition stuff, it came in like the chintziest of packaging. And whenever the motherships came out, it was like, okay, so this was always the vision we were doing them. But now we kind of go, sometimes we like go back to that chintzy plastic packaging. The blushes they're not as heavy and it's not the same kind of lacquered packaging that you get the motherships in. And I think if it was, that'd be bonus points. But I don't really have problems with the blush packaging. But I think the thing that really got people and and, and if you weren't there at the time, if you didn't see it happen in real time, you probably wouldn't feel as w the way I, I do. So the first time Pat McGrath released the like the Blitz Astral Eye Quads, they came in the same lacquered, beautiful packaging that the motherships did, but only like four shades in it. The next year, she did more quads. They did not come in that packaging. And it was like much cheaper, a much decline, like a very big decline in the packaging from one year to another. And I think about that a lot. Like I think about that. I also had the Intensifies Eyes one that felt like it would break at any moment. It felt very cheap. There's just some things that she really gets right and some things that she doesn't. So it's inconsistent. And I do think that Pat McGrath sometimes earns 
the luxury title that is like dawned upon it but I don't think overall that it is actually like I don't like I think that it's kind of questionable where it falls most of the time because it's like you never know what the release is going to be I don't think that cardboard packaging is inherently bad I don't want you to think that like I know that it can be more sustainable I understand that but like I don't even like the way that it's done like I've seen cardboard packaging done more interestingly than what Pat McGrath does and it's interesting I don't understand all of the like it's always like crowns and like gold and like the mothership outer packaging is really beautiful and I don't understand why the smaller palettes like we get like different artwork for them and I wish they didn't do that I wish the the artwork was seemed as interesting as mothership ones like I just think that should be consistent all the way through if you've ever had the Pat McGrath powder if you've ever had the Pat McGrath primer mama the primer is a plastic bottle which is fine it has construction paper that's embossed around it. It's so light. It's so bizarre. It's inconsistent. And that's why people, I mean, like, I know that I have said a lot of things about Pat McGrath on my channel, but I think that's like one of the things that a lot of people get kind of confused by, especially if you're someone who supports the brand often and has like a lot to compare from within the brand. The consistency is all over the place. Typically, Pat McGrath formulas perform very well. Pat McGrath also does something that I don't think luxury brands really should do. Pat McGrath runs sales every day. The wind blew west today, so there's a sale, 30% off. It's one of those things where it's like, while we all know there's a markup on everything, right? In order to make money, you have to like mark up the prices. And I understand that, you understand that. That's something that we understand in order to pay everyone who's been involved with making it. And obviously luxury makeups hike up even more to make more money off of pe silly people like me who are like, I can't just have a blush and like the most like, in, in simple packaging. I have to have it in some, like that's me. And I know that. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. But that's what I want from my makeup experience. And we, you can either be a performance-based person or you could be like a performance and packaging-based person. And that's where I fall in the line. Why should I as a consumer ever think that your products are worth that price because you don't seem to think that your products are worth that price because if I know if I just wait a few weeks they'll go on sale and that's a problem when a brand is trying to and I, I'm not saying that brands shouldn't run sales I'm not saying that in fact any other brand at any level it doesn't bother me how often they run a sale luxury brands it does bother me because it's like, well, you're, if you're trying to be this elusive thing and you're trying to cater to people who are willing to pay $129 for a mothership palette, if you're trying to cater to someone who sh should be willing to buy that at full price, whenever they can get it at $77 most days of the year, why would they ever? And so then it becomes like a different thing. I think that, sorry, this became like a how to solve Pat McGrath's problem. Someone said this in my comments once before, and I agree with it. Pat McGrath should subdivide into two brands. Do, the, do a luxury brand, a luxury brand akin to the motherships where it has a markup on it, whatever. Do a subsidiary brand, call it something different, make it a really cool name. Make that your high-end brand. The one that comes in the cardboard packaging, the chintzier packaging, where it's like more about the performance of the formula and less about the overall experience. It'd be less confusing to consumers because there's a lot of conversation about that particular thing and I just wanted to throw that out there. I think I would like to end this video talking about a brand. And again, I'm just using the brands that I have mentioned as examples as to what I think of luxury and these brands. But I think a luxury brand who mostly gets it right is Victoria Beckham Beauty. And the reason I think that Victoria Beckham gets it right is for a number of reasons. And there might be a Victoria Beckham brand review coming down the line from me. The packaging is incredibly beautiful and consistent. And you know what that does? That encourages me to buy more from the brand, especially if you're someone who's like really into aesthetics as far as the appearance of your makeup goes. If everything has the tortoiseshell design on it, it's consistent across all of the products, have like a similar vibe to them. Really dark packaging, really weighted packaging, like feels luxurious in your hands. It does a lot of that, right? It hits a lot of the it hits a lot of the marks. I don't subscribe to Clean Beauty, but it does seem that Clean Beauty brands seem to cater to a higher end market. Now, I'm sure Victoria Beckham has her reasons for deciding to be a clean beauty brand. I'm not trying to dismiss them, but marketing wise, if you're trying to market to like waspy white women, uh, there you go. That's how you do it. The, the brand releases things so 
kind of specifically and like kind of when things are ready, if that makes sense. So they have a line of eyeliners and the eyeliners are really popular. And, you know, a lot of it's it's kind of rare for a luxury brand to have like more than three eyeliner shades, right? It's like you have your black, you have your brown, you have your black and brown, you have a blue because luxury brands love blue eyeliner. I don't really know what it is about that. That's like kind of where it stops usually for luxury brands. But I think because this eyeliner formula has done so well, what the brand has done is every now and then we just get a new shade of it. It's just like, and now there's ocean blue. Now there's a olive green one. Although I've heard the olive green one is actually not that olive but I'm just saying like there's an there's an ash gray one there's you know there's just a variety of colors and they're like very honed in they seem really well thought out it's one of those things where it's just like that makes a lot of sense the blushes she released two new shades of the blushes last year and they had been out for some time the cheeky cheeky posh blushes had been out for a while and it was just like we've released two new shades they don't do holiday collections every year it's like you only get product from the brand whenever i feel like the brand knows it's ready for the market now spoiler alert it's not everything is absolute perfection from the brand i don't think that but it does feel like it's for someone, right? If it's not for me, it's for someone. There's someone out there that's going to like that formula. That's going to think that's really, really great. And that's, that's luxury. And when you pay those prices, which they are expensive, they're not even the most expensive brand that I've like talked about in this video. It is expensive to buy from Victoria Beckham, but like everything kind of just like meets you where you're at, right? So like you paid $60 for this thing. Does it feel like a thing that you paid $60 for? Sort of. It does because it's like it's kind of hitting a lot of the marks. It's like it's beautiful to look at. It's fun to hold. It's fun to interact with. It performs really well for the most part, in my opinion. (laughs) Like it does a lot of the things. And the other thing is, so yeah, I just feel like Victoria Beckham's brand, that brand, everything just feels really well thought out and thought through. When it, from concept to getting into your hands as a consumer seems well thought out and that just elevates the experience and like shopping on their website isn't atrocious it's it's actually not the worst of the brands I got my shipping was really fast because I spent a lot of money like it's like it, and then when I got it it felt like a luxurious experience to open it all up the packaging is consistent across the board and I just think that a lot of other brands like miss a lot of that like I also think like you know, from interacting with some Chanel products, like their packaging isn't very good, but they certainly mark up their packaging just because they have the brand name. So is that luxury? Like, what are you paying for? You're certainly paying for the name of the product. You're not paying for, you know what I mean? Like there's just, there's a differences between luxury brands and it's really hard to like, without having personal experience with each one of them, it's really hard to suss out like what is and isn't because like Pat McGrath, there are some brands where it's like some of them are really, really good and like worth it and like give you that whole experience. And then some of it doesn't. When like Shantikai, there are products that I would recommend from Shantikai, but there are also products that I tried from Shantikai that are good, but I'd be like, go another route. It doesn't need, it doesn't need to be that one. Do you know what I mean? It's just like really hard to suss through all of it. But yeah, to reiterate, My personal feeling is that from start to finish, luxury makeup should be an experience from the point of purchase to it getting to you quicker to when you get it, it's like a whole experience opening the box to opening all of the boxes to unravel all the things for all the things to look really beautiful. Bonus points if they are very consistent packaging wise, beautiful to look at together. They look like a thing that you bought together from the same brand to it being like heavy. That's a personal thing. I like whenever a product feels heavy that that's something that I enjoy because I'm like a klutz, right? So there's something about density that makes it feel <laughs> feel like it's going to hold together a little bit better. But that's not always true. To the performance of the product being better than what I can get elsewhere. And that's like not always the truth, right? There are a lot of dupes and things that a lot of people have done the work to time to find. But like, if I know I'm going to get the thing out of that thing, then I'm just going to buy that thing. And like, I know that's not everyone's case. Not everyone has that capability not everyone can afford that I'm not trying to say that but like we are talking about luxury makeup at this point so it's like of course it's not going to be an accessible price point to everyone but I also think I would like to end with what I would like to see from luxury beauty in the future extended shade ranges everybody there are people of all walks of life that have money make products for them Jesus Christ, what is your definition of what a luxury beauty product should be? What was it about experience? Is it about packaging? Is it about formula? Is it about all of the things? What are some luxury products that you have tried and you felt like that was 
a luxury experience from start to finish. What are some luxury products that you have tried that have been absolutely disastrous, didn't perform, weren't luxury in the hands, wasn't a good experience dealing with the brand? I would love to hear that all down below. Anyway, as always, I appreciate you all so much for watching. And if you are new to the channel and you enjoyed today's video, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video before you leave it. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. Again, there is no pressure to do that, just if you want to. But I would like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. You are so awesome. You keep this channel running and I really appreciate you for that. And remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me. I feel like cut it out. It's like very much what I did. Bye-bye.